And as we spoke about before, digestive inflammation can be a major source of uh, inflammatory load. Um, and all of these uh, things that are listed here can be monitored um, uh, through your naturopath, through the clinic. Um, we, uh, we tend to focus on these particular issues at the Tahoma Clinic here. And pH testing uh, in the stomach is, is by far one of the most um, utilized uh, analyses that we do for people to determine how well they're digesting. If uh, the hydrochloric acid isn't there, then you're going to have a harder time absorbing the right amino acids and B12 and various other nutrients, uh, including the, the minerals. Um, oftentimes we'll do uh, what's called a micro digestive panel to see if your body is struggling with certain foods, say fats are harder to, to digest than carbohydrates or protein. Um, a low gamma globulin level on a serum test can often mean there uh, is digestive inflammation within the body. Um, because B12 and folate can be very difficult to absorb, um, <clears throat> we look at that to see how much inflammation was in, is in the body to determine um, how easily things are getting absorbed. The more food sensitivities, the more leaky gut issues are going on, uh, it's much more likely to have be caused from digestive inflammation. There's also a urine test that I often use called urinary indican, which uh, is, is actually a toxin that gets produced from this um, fermentation process that occurs in the colon. So these toxins get reabsorbed into the bloodstream and wreak havoc throughout the body, uh, sometimes cause migraines, arthritis, uh, asthma, all kinds of uh, high acid uh, problems. Other ways I measure the amount of uh, tissue inflammation, uh, C-reactive protein is a very simple test. Uh, I use the uh, highly sensitive C-reactive protein and I try to keep that under 1.0. Uh, I also look at fibrinogen, uh, homocysteine, the sedimentation rate, and um, a little more costly, but you, we can also measure interleukin levels, which are inflammatory cytokines, and also uh, TNF-alpha, which is, ha has been linked to uh, cancer risk. And these are ideal levels of CRP uh, according to gender. And uh, obviously, the, the less there is, the, the more uh, likely you're not going to be suffering from a lot of these inflammatory changes. So what are the most common inflammatory factors that occur in uh, the foods we're exposed to? Probably the, the, the who's who list here would include uh, saturated fats. Um, these are fats that, are, uh, are, that stay solid at room temperature. So deep fried foods, trans fats, um, artificial foods like margarine, uh, Crisco. These are, uh, create more inflammation within the body. And this, is, this has been measured. It's not... It's not a bias against these foods. It's just been measured that these create more inflammation. Um, and, and really wonderful foods, whether it's organic uh, or not, uh, meat, dairy, and eggs are high in arachidonic acid. So uh, these require a little more breakdown, a little more digestive capability. So we, we again, want to make sure that these f uh, foods are uh, well metabolized before they build up in the system and create extra inflammatory load. Um, the glycemic index is another means of measuring inflammation um, and we can determine from that uh, how much carbonic acid gets produced and, uh, and sugar is one of a uh, 
maybe at the top of the list as far as producing uh, inflammation within the body. And of course, a lot of foods just don't have many antioxidants contained in them. So um, the foods that are organic tend to have more selenium, more zinc, more vitamin C, A, those sorts of things. Um, the foods that are more protective are uh, the monosaturated oils. These are uh, liquid at, at uh, room temperature. And of course, these include olive oil, avocado, sesame oil. Um, these have a high EPA DHA ratio uh, or content. <coughs> and um, these are strong anti-inflammatory um, fatty acids. Uh, they're very high, of course, in seafood. Um, other antioxidants, vitamin C, E, beta carotene, all help neutralize free radicals that are just naturally produced within the body. Um, B vitamins, of course, are uh, uh, correlated to reducing homocysteine. Um, mineral antioxidants, selenium and zinc, are incredibly important. Uh, one study found selenium prevents 50% of uh, cancers. Um, just at a minimal dose, uh, 200 micrograms per day, uh, the amount that occurs in six Brazil nuts could cut your risk of cancer by 50%. And uh, there's also phytochemicals that uh, are anti-inflammatory that occur in foods like uh, curry, turmeric, ginger, uh, garlic, onion, pineapple, uh, has bromelain as an enzyme, and also in chili peppers. And I'm uh, quickly going to run through various foods that are some of the best and some of the worst as far as uh, <clears throat> inflammatory load. And um, uh, obviously, these can be fantastic foods once in a while. But if you already have signs of inflammation, if you're dealing with an autoimmune problem or have arthritis, uh, asthma, you know, signs of inflammation, you want to stick to the, the best foods possible at reducing your inflammation. And I'd like to refer you to a book called The Inflammation-Free Diet Plan. Um, I like this book because it gives you um, scales as far as what foods are most beneficial and, and what aren't. Uh, here's a list of more vegetables. Uh, interestingly, deep fried French fries are probably one of the, <laughs> the most inflammatory vegetable, uh, if you can call it a vegetable. Uh, white potatoes, of course, have a high glycemic index, as does corn. Uh, f dairy products tend to have a high inflammatory load. Uh, the more you can culture the dairy product, the, the less inflammation it carries. And, of course, fish have uh, a lot of high, uh, EPA, DHA levels, and uh, you just want to be careful of uh, uh, mercury levels. Um, salmon is probably one of the best fish as far as reducing inflammation. Make sure it's uh, wild salmon rather than farm salmon, which tends to have very little of the EPA DHA. Other uh, uh, lists here, poultry um, is uh, the darker meats tend to be more inflammatory, which carry more purines within them. And here is a list of uh, various oils and fats. Uh, you can see uh, even though some of them are uh, monosaturated, uh, they may contain various fatty acids that are uh, pro-inflammatory.